All right. Welcome again. So uh, in the first hour, we did look at um, challenges. We've uh, um, just discussed a couple of challenges that are common to marriage. Um, we, we've, we're going to focus on this hour on what do we do to overcome life's challenges? What are simple instructions that we can pick from scripture, which are very practical in its, uh, in its doing too, to help us tide through these challenges. Okay, So we're going to be looking at uh, specifically four ways that we can uh, um, overcome these challenges. Um, if you, know, you recollect in the previous uh, lecture, we did talk about the way we respond, how we react to a challenge determines the outcome of it as well. So if we take on a challenge negatively, or if we break under it, there are high chances that uh, the result or the, um, the outcome of it can be as um, debilitating. But if we respond positively, if we respond in faith and in hope, we do see that there is always good that comes out from any any situation that we may be in. Okay, so let's focus on that. That how we position ourselves to react and respond really determines the outcome of those challenges. So the first uh, first thing we'd like to look in some practical ways of how we'd like to overcome life's cha challenge is first and foremost is to guard your heart. Um, so whenever challenges we are faced with these challenges. Uh, it affects, first and foremost, it affects our heart. It affects what we feel. It affects what we think. And thereby, that begins to conduct our behavior. So, uh, you know, when, when we try and look at why do we behave a certain way, we need to go back into examining what have been our thoughts and out of those thoughts what have been our feelings that have come because that's what will propel our actions or our behavior uh, so scripture says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life so it's where everything starts is uh, you know everything starts from your heart that says in proverbs 4 23 uh, that's where the heart is where your life starts. So especially when we go through challenges, um, if we aren't careful, if we do not, if we are not vigilant, there can be many things that hold us captive. There can be negative thoughts. There can be negative feelings that hold us cap captive. Now, depending on the challenge that you're facing, you could either face fear you could face sadness, you could face anger, frustration, bitterness. Uh, it can be it can be any of this and it really depends on what you have gone through. So the more that we harbor these feelings of fear, uh, bitterness or hate or anger or uh, a sense of uh, you know dejection, it, it has the capacity to get the better of us because our hearts, it's from where it springs up these issues. So when we say guarding our hearts, we need, first of all, to be careful about what are we allowing or permitting to experience and feel as a result of some challenges that go through. So yes, it is natural that we may have these emotions because we are human, we may experience these emotions. However, for those of us who are believers, we are not without hope. We are, you know, scripture says, do not be like, you know, those who have no hope. Those who have no hope wallow in pity or in sadness or in anger, react out of these negative symptoms. So we are asked and called to guard this because it is um, human 
that when something goes wrong, the heart begins to function, the heart begins to respond. But being aware and realizing that these negative thoughts uh, is not going to take us anywhere. It's only going to lead us to death. It's only going to lead us to further destruction. Okay, So guarding our hearts from the feelings that we may uh, we may harbor, we may suppress, we may contain with us is the first thing that we are called to do. So that 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 is through realizing number one that this is where we are at. These are the emotions where we are at. Often I've uh, you know especially when there has been certain untoward incidents that have happened. Um, you know it could be either either let's say. Um, infidelity or it could be maybe there's some harm that's caused uh, you know in the life of a family member and uh, they may feel entitled to hold on to that anger or bitterness I said you know i have a right to be angry i have the right to be bitter about this but what they are not seeing is harboring this causes significant uh, distress not just spiritually of course but even in in every other area of their lives you know it can be physically it can be emotionally they become bitter they become like these bitter roots that will finally give up only a bitter fruit right so guarding your heart from these negative feelings or recognizing that they are there guarding your heart from your feeling towards god often people um and I think a lot of us have been in this space where we have got angry with God. We said, God, why me? Or why did you put me in this situation? Why did this event have to come about the way that it is? Okay. And the, thereby there becomes a question about God's goodness, a question about, um, about whether we are his loved possession. We are his children. So we we throw our arms in the air and question God. Lord, if you did love me, you wouldn't have allowed this to happen. Okay. So to know that we need to be careful to uh, of how we respond to God. Yes, God wants us to be open. God wants us to share our thoughts and our fears to him but not stay there because as we look into you know maybe the second and the third um, practical way we, we we we're going to also going to be talking about faith that if you implicitly if one implicitly trusts god that he is a god of goodness and whatever he does is not for the wrong or for the bad of his children are ability to trust is a lot greater our ability to um, to uh, to uh, rely and depend on god is much much greater okay i think charles has asked a question please more shed light on recognizing negative situations okay so um uh, so often i i, I think i i just want to quickly draw uh, a very you know, a, a simple principle. Whenever a situation happens in our lives, it needn't be something that's challenging. It can be anything, you know. Every situation has the potential for us uh, for us to bring about some thoughts about the situation. Like, like for example, let's say uh, the situation is, okay, we're sitting in this class. It's a situation. It's a, it's a very neutral situation situation but you know when we're thinking uh, when 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 i've said okay uh, guys come on let's think about what this class is okay now depending on the thoughts that you have 
okay so let's let's uh, figure out what are the thoughts so some some thoughts will be will probably be oh gosh this is a really boring class you know i i i just can't keep my eyes awake so that's one thought okay or another thought is um you know i'm i'm quite excited to hear the the uh, the responses of people or another thought is um, you know i i really want to um, delve a little bit more into this subject so you you see that every situation has the potential to bring about certain thoughts and depending on the thoughts you engage in there there is a there is a emotional response to so for the first class of thoughts this is oh it's really boring you know i can't keep my eyes open the feeling is actually a sense of boredom or a sense of uh, you know lack of interest or disinterest or let's say someone who's excited uh to to hear i want to hear about what other people say probably uh, is is in a feeling of uh, you know excitement is in a place of engaging and saying you know i want to uh, I, you know i i really i'm looking forward it's a state of expectation that they are in okay so depending on what the thought process is is what it it is it naturally leads you to a feeling or an emotion and this emotion is what leads you to your behavior so in the first instance for someone who is uh, you know has the thoughts that this is a boring class okay feels probably uh, frustrated and you know disinterested will probably sleep the behavior is you will sleep right whereas for someone who is maybe um you know excited has an expectation you know i'm i'm expecting something today uh, has a feeling of an expectation and the and the behavior is alertness so no matter whatever the situation is so let's look at a situation like this yes there there may be a difficult situation the way that you look at the situation so let's say it's a it's a financial situation you have a struggle financially okay now i will just look at it two ways what maybe one person thinks of it as okay this is gone forever okay this is my doom my children are going to beg beg um we're not going to have anywhere we're going to be out on the street let's say that's the thought okay what's the emotion going to be the emotion is going to be one of fear emotion is going to be one of one of worry one of anxiety okay and what behavior is that going to be there's probably going to be uh, you know uh, the, there's there's a sense of uh, 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 a lack of self esteem within them they probably are going around telling every every person you know i, I, I you know i don't have any money i'm i'm sure you know this is this is the end of it for me so they they begin to discuss it with people in a negative form as well let's look at the other part let's say a person who has hope and faith and says you know uh god is going to pull me through this god is the one who is going to give me an increase he's the one who sees no matter what my challenges are um he's in this with me so that's the thought so what happens to the feeling the feeling is one of expectation the one of joy the one of hope okay and maybe the behavior will be you know they probably put in their resume somewhere they go and talk to people and say you know i'm expecting something i'm looking for a job there seems to be more strength and energy that comes out of this okay so recognizing that situations can any situation uh, whether it's a positive or a negative situation can bring about a positive or a negative thought which can bring about harbor negative feelings okay so recognizing this this kind of a flow chart you know is a simple way know that every situation has the potential to bring about certain thoughts and these thoughts bring about feelings or emotions that we harbor and these emotions propel our behavior okay so recognizing the thoughts and these negative emotions are so important because it helps us see the more that we operate uh, we guard our hearts and operate in faith the more that we are able to respond to a situation better i hope i answered uh, uh, that brought about a little bit more clarity charles for you okay right so guarding our hearts how, so how so the first thing that we said was yes we need to recognize that that every challenge can bring about these feelings or these these negative feelings towards our situation and negative feelings towards god so how do we guard our hearts the first and foremost thing is 
you can guard your heart by meditating on the word of god <clears throat> by keeping your eyes focused on his word so there are millions of things that happen in our world but for all those million things there is a word of god that gives you hope that gives you strength to carry on okay so the more we take our eyes off the situation off the problem and the more we settle with god's word in our hearts we are able to guard our hearts okay it's like this um you know when you let's say uh, i don't know if I'm, i'm sure some of you know how you make french toast right french toast is made you take bread you take milk egg sugar and you dip soak the bread in it and then you know kind of pan fry it so whatever you're soaked in that's what you are full of so when you soak god's word when you soak in god's word you will only exude what is the word of god when you meditate on it but if you harbor or uh continue to uh hash out to to ruminate about these feelings you know the bitterness or the anger that you're feeling you will only be soaked in that so the the sure cut way is to keep god's word in your heart so the greater the challenges you know the greater of god's word <clears throat> we need in our, in in ourselves sorry excuse me so the greater the challenges the greater we need to keep meditating on god's word to keep us focused on him okay we also as as a, a, as a way of recognizing these negative attitudes is to ask god to fill us with the fruit of his spirit that comes from the holy spirit you know uh those the nine fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness and self control to ask god to fill us with that heart attitude that only comes from the work of the holy spirit so keeping on asking and you know uh joining ourselves in it so the more that we are in the spirit the more of the fruit we are going to express we are going to manifest so this the uh the way that we uh the our attitude towards the these situations completely matter and that's what i meant by saying you know when a, in a situation you have the choice <clears throat> to either make it something that is filled with faith or to be filled with fear you have the choice you can decide which way you are going to go and one way of doing that is keeping your your heart fixed on god's word because that will keep reminding you that i need to respond in faith and that keeps reminding me and helps me recognize that i'm operating in fear okay so the 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 focus is on the solution it's on the remedy knowing that god is the one who can turn this around for you So when you focus in faith you're also focusing on the solution you're focusing on the way god is going to time this out for you or god is going to work things out for you okay there's an a, there is a, a nice analogy that's given here in the book it talks about uh, two birds the hummingbird and the vulture and it says during migration they fly over desert regions so they fly over something that is extremely dry and arid and you know has, is absolutely uh, not fertile and all that the vultures look for is dead meat all that they look for and seek for is dead meat whereas the hummingbird looks for those uh, colorful uh, blooms that may be that that is there in the desert so so you will only find what you are looking for so as a vulture the vulture looks for carcasses but whereas the uh, the hummingbird looks for those fresh things things that have life so the more that 
you you will only find what you what you're seeking and that's a lesson for us to know that even through desert times even through times of storm we can choose to to operate in fear or we can choose to operate in faith okay that brings us to the next part of of how what else do we do is to overcome evil with good and you know this is something that we keep stating over and over again about how this is so important for us as believers and uh, maybe i'll ask one of you to read the scripture that's there on page 130 and it is uh, romans 12 verses 19 to 21 so would someone kindly read that romans 12 19 to 21 Romans twelve nineteen to twenty one. Yeah. Never take revenge, my friends, but instead let God's anger do it. For the Scripture says, "I will take revenge; I will pay back," says the Lord. Indeed, as the Scripture says, "If your enemies are hungry, feed them; if they are thirsty, give them a drink." For by doing this. you will make them burn with shame do not let evil defeat you instead conquer evil with good thank you thank you christopher so uh, you know this is a this is quite a different principle from what you will hear the world saying um and i'm saying this because you know even as i help people uh, i work with people i work with unbelievers as well and one of the common threads that i see uh among people who have not experienced the grace of god is the need to pay back it's the need to you know uh so especially among couples i do see when there is um when there is unfaithfulness the affected party always says how is the person going to pay back how much are they going to pay back and i know of couples who 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 has a list of things that they want a payback for okay and the list is on and on and on so often the question that i ask these uh, these couples are okay let's say that your partner has paid back everything in full does that mean you've come to a place of oneness with your with your partner and i had this one wife tell me you know as a wife i'm dead but i want to pay back so in her mind that it's only until her husband pays back in full can they even get even okay and uh, this husband i think initially he did try to do the payback but then he's figured that it's absolutely not possible and he's been asking for forgiveness which she definitely is finding hard to do so it is natural that you want revenge you want to take things in your Uh, in you know in your control so that you can treat the other person as unfair unfairly as they treated you but scripture is very clear that revenge is not for us but instead it says god is the one who pays back he is the one who will bring justice he is the one who will ensure that retribution but for us we do not take the place of god but step back and instead do something that is quite contrary it is to do good it is it is to overcome whatever evil has happened with good so god directs us to overcome evil with good so what what does this mean so every time it's a conscious decision that you will step away from revenge you choose to step away from revenge 
you know and i think it also happens in very small situations at home you know like for example and uh, you know just just this morning i was talking to a friend and this friend was saying that um, there was there was something that the husband had dropped on the on the floor okay i, I think it was it was some piece of paper or something like that and uh, so you know when when this wife actually brought this up to the husband the husband retorted back and said said what about all the other things that you put on the floor how come you've not taken note of that you know so it takes wisdom to step back and not retaliate okay whether it's a husband or a wife i mean this is this is not talking about anyone specifically but just saying that it takes a step back to retaliate and the need to want justice or, or have that tit for tat butter for fat you kill my cat i kill your rat right to 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 need to step back so that you can and what you're doing is you're choosing to forgive a specific offense you're choosing you you you're saying i'm not going to take this but uh, and but i i'm choosing to forgive and that is a willful act okay and we will talk about more talk about this more in the next um uh, in the next week about uh forgiveness it is choosing to love even when it is painful and it is choosing to do something to yield even when you really don't have to okay that's what is evil uh, overcoming evil with good so keeping away revenge and choosing to to do good even when you really don't have to even when it hurts or even when um when there could probably be unforgiveness you're extending that because not out of your own so a lot of times you know Uh, we do find it hard to do it and many times it's because we're probably psyching ourselves to do it on our own but if we can come to a place of absolute surrender and telling god saying god i have no strength and grace to do good or to you know just be nice in the situation i don't have the strength and that's where i think that's where the power of god just flows mightily even without your knowledge even without your understanding you probably don't know the um the whereabouts and the nuances of it but it will come when we choose to keep away from doing it on our own uh, strength or our or our our own will or our own will power you know or just for the fact you know i have to do it because i'm really religiously supposed to be doing this but then when we we need to come to the end of our uh, you know the last breath for god to really show his strength and power and i and i know that we've all faced it in some situations or the other okay so the first one is guarding our hearts second is overcoming evil with good the third is to be able to exercise our faith uh when we look into uh, you know whatever we were read in the gospels we see that when people come running to god in their times of distress or in a situation of distress a lot of times he's turned around and asked them where is your faith what's you know just or it says only believe or have faith in god or don't you believe that i uh, you know i can do this for you right so so some of the instances that that we see is um you know when the um, when the disciples were on on the boat with jesus the first thing he asks his disciples where is your faith right or at a point when jairus comes um you know when his daughter dies he comes to jesus and says he tells jesus don't be afraid i mean jesus jesus tells jesus don't be afraid only believe so when we exercise our faith we are not putting our focus on our ability to work things out 
but we are inviting the control of god now as human beings you know and this is this is quite true if you think of it we do not want to be in a place of not being in control you know we need to be in control everything we need to be aware of right and that's a lot of our human and carnal nature uh you know i need to know uh, you know what's going to happen in the next 5 years i need to know what's going going on right now you know if there is some and, and that's what causes a lot of agitation and upset in our lives you know maybe let's say in a workplace uh your colleague or someone has has told you that they would do something but they don't land up doing it and that creates so much of anger because you've lost control you've lost control about what you want to do how you need to do it how it should be done okay and uh, th- to know to understand that uh, often in challenges we we respond like that because we 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 know we have lost control but fear sets in because we are trying to assume that control back but faith is about giving god the control knowing that he is absolutely in complete control of every situation and there's nothing that does not pass him there's nothing that he is not aware of so regardless of what the situations whether it's a death whether it's an illness whether it's a financial issue whether whether it's the waywardness of a child whether it's the unfaithfulness of a spouse whether it's um uh, abuse whatever whatever it may be we know that god that as we place our trust in god he will work things out in a manner that will help us in in our days ahead okay we see in another example of abraham okay we see that when god called abraham he left everything right when he left everything and he did and he followed what what god wanted him to do he moved from one uh, place to another without really knowing anything right without understanding anything so we are called similarly to be a people of faith to be um to be uh, you know those who respond with faith because faith we we know that faith is a place of rest for us it's a place of peace it's a place of assurance it's a place of confidence for us because you know in scripture so many places it says you know come to me if you're weary come to me and i will give you that rest or come to me and i will make you strong and secure because the faith that we place in god it is in the person of god knowing that he knows everything and and whatever he does is for our good so we don't allow that faith the, the fear to take away our faith but we respond in faith because we know that there will be victory there will be life there will be abundance there will be success there will be his perfect will that comes as a result of these challenges so responding to to our challenges in faith okay now this is tougher when situations are really hard like we spoke about the irreversible situations it gets tougher there right but we are yet called to be a people of faith and the more that we relinquish the need to be in control and allow god to take on the you know the 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 wheel the more we begin to see the beauty of those challenges okay and the fourth one is to be able to take small steps but yet positive steps in the way we deal with our situations okay so god the way that we may deal with every situation may be very very different but yet we shouldn't be stagnant we take that smaller step of faith every time as we're passing through uh those difficult situations so 
depending on what the situation may be. You know, if it is one of uh, uh, extreme violence and abuse, smaller steps of getting the help of people who would, um, you know, begin to sort some things out. Or if it's a financial situation, it is probably to get the help of some advisors who will give you uh, some ways of saving and some ways of investing or some ways of budgeting. Or if it is a period of uh, bereavement and, and grief that one may be going through, it is getting the help of good uh, believers or good friends who can walk alongside with you through the difficult time and encourage you through that. If it's a time of sickness, where you stand together in faith with others who could declare healing and um, restoration through that. So, so depending on what every situation is, is to be able to take those small little steps with his help to journey through it. Psalm 40 verses 1 to 3, maybe I can, uh, may I request somebody to read that. I'm on page 131, Psalm 41 to 3. Psalms 41 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear, and will trust in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Anita. Yeah, so. Through the scripture, we see, you know, in verse 2, it says, He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. So there are going to be seasons in your life that we may need to walk in wisdom and start moving forward little by little, taking those little steps with the help of God to help you from the place that you have been to the place that God wants you to be. So walking in wisdom and being able to think ahead, to think long term, and to think about how God can fulfill his plans and purposes for you, despite the challenges that, that you may come by. Okay. So the four very practical steps, one is to be able to guard your heart, of the negative feelings, guard your negative, guard your heart of the feelings that you may have towards God by, by meditating on God's word and asking the power of the Holy Spirit. The second would be to overcome evil with good, not following revenge or retaliation. The third is to keep exercising the faith we have in God, to declaring that, that as we respond in faith, as we respond uh, uh, through faith, that's what will bring us to a place of rest, to a place of confidence, to a place of patience and resting. And fourth, to, to be wise and take whatever small steps that may be required to go through these challenges. Okay. Uh, we have five minutes and I want to, um, uh, you know, just stop for any questions or any thoughts, any observations, any testimonies, um, you know, if you've put any of these principles uh, in place, how has that worked for you? So um, I'll keep this open for the next five minutes for any questions or observations or thoughts. Yes, uh, Christopher. And Samuel, I'll, I'll uh, get you after that. Yes, Christopher. Yes, I just had a question on uh, overcoming evil with good. And uh, the duplicate was uh, Romans 12, 19, 21. So um, it mentioned over there that uh, instead let God's anger do it. And uh, where the scripture says, I will take revenge, I will pay back, says the Lord. So uh, I'm just thinking that. Um, it could be uh, natural for the person who is, you know, uh, undergoing that challenge or the one who has, you know, uh, uh, been uh, uh, 
uh, you know, gone through, that, gone through that tough time to uh, go back to God and um, rely on God to, to, to do the payback and um, still not feel real forgiveness in, you know, instead of, um, you know, you know, doing the payback themselves, they are, you know, they're just sort of going back to God and saying, God, you take it, you do the payback. Mm. So I'm just wondering, you know, how, um, I mean, is that really forgiveness that it, that is that has been shown? Okay, thank you, Christopher. So, um, what what we are called to do is, um, you know, so I I think in a situation like that, we're dictating to God that God, I'm waiting for you to do the payback, right? But what is needed of us is we've given up the need or the desire that there be a payback. And that is left to God to do. Knowing that God in his time, um, I, I, you know, so when is the time? It can be at, at, a, at a point of, it can be later, maybe during judgment. It can be at any point of time. That is not something that we are called to look into. So when we when we say not take revenge, but let the Lord do his work. And so, so if we take this in line with other scripture, it is that we forgive as Christ forgave us. So we, we don't take the scripture just um, of itself, but take it in conjunction with other scriptures that says when you are wronged, you know, go. Uh, set things right with your brother and then come and pray to me, right? So we see that in Matthew. You know, set things right and then come back and pray because unforgiveness uh, is sin. And unforgiveness does not, uh, you know, unforgiveness hinders your prayers, okay? So... If it is with a heart of unforgiveness or a heart of bitterness that you're going to God, that is in a place of sin. So we need to come to a place of um, releasing, extending that forgiveness and knowing that out whatever happens thereafter is God's doing. And that there is no need for me as an individual to know or to see the payback happening. So we, we've We've relinquished it into the hands of God, but followed uh, the obedience, being obedient to his word of forgiving the other as we relinquish it into the hands of God. I hope I answered that, Christopher. Samuel? Yeah, Samuel? You, I think you had a question too. <clears throat> Thank you. No, I just had something to share. Um, sure, go ahead. So I have, uh, so my one year old, uh, very recently, she fell sick, like she caught her first flu. Uh, and, and uh, all, so my, my, my elder one is five year old. So we just got reminded of how difficult it is when, when an infant, uh, a one year old uh, gets her first flu. The first time the baby's nose is blocked and she can't breathe and she's fussy all the time. So we just got reminded of that. And um, so all of this, I just, it, it, it came about in retrospect later when I was reflecting, which is, um, and of course, through my, uh, through my wife's mouth, which is when, uh, when the infant falls sick, I think uh, my wife, she's bitter and she's vicious a little bit. I mean, in a good way, like I think as most mothers are, because we are so helpless. And and uh, I think her natural response was to, uh, I mean, she would look for a fight. Uh, I mean, she wants to blame somebody or maybe I don't know, just want a way of her uh, responding to the situation. Uh, so she would look for a fight and she would keep, uh, I think I, the husband being the closest one, I, I'm, I'm the bearer of the brunt. And uh, and uh, this time around, I mean, it 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 came from her. Like you know, she 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 told me that you didn't give me a fight this time. 
which was uh, which was good uh, you know and and i didn't notice that i didn't do i and like uh, and then when i reflected in in the past normally she would look for a fight and i would give her a fight you know she would say the medicine not good the doctor the doctor is not proper the, like we shouldn't have gone here we shouldn't have done this and and she would keep saying those things and i would i would somehow respond in a way and and we would have some argument and then you know just, uh, go into separate rooms cool off and come back but it didn't happen this time i was like i was besides her like just quietly uh, you know, I was taking it in uh, I think I was a lot in prayer uh, I didn't give her a fight and and she I mean I didn't realize I was doing all of this I just um, something I think but but I think it could be from this I mean not I think I know that something that I've taken from this class is uh, a different perspective to compassion and how you know how to uh, in in how compassion is a, a big element in marriage and how it's required and and more than seeking for compassion i think uh, i could uh, have more compassion towards myself so i think that was something that i i was i kept on uh, uh, reminding myself when our younger one was not well and uh, and after she became fine uh, the storm we weathered the storm uh, and that when they were playing she said you didn't give me a fight this time and uh, that was and she thanked me for it and uh, i thought that was amazing and it's wanted to share that thank you samuel thank you so much i mean it's 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 so lovely that uh, uh, you know god's truth can actually so beautifully be practically worked out in our lives and we see the fruit of it you know when we're actually obedient um so that's something that um, i'm i think i'm also personally learning as i have teens in my home um and if you have teens in your home you'd know sometimes the things that they say can be quite sharp and cutting and um you know often uh there is there is this the sense of retort that i feel i must say but uh, you know i'm trying to put this principle it's it isn't easy because it can be hurting when they say something but when you choose to not respond it may be in a in a in a time in a place in a place from anger or frustration but at a later point of time lovingly address that i've seen that it definitely creates a lot more of warmth and togetherness uh, you know you're not reacting off the hat but you've decided chosen to um let it be let it go not respond but overcome that later with some you know but maybe a correction in a in a in a way that is not demeaning or not angry or not coming out of from sarcasm so yes so thank you thank you for sharing samuel all right we'll uh, close for break uh, it's 10:49 uh i'll we'll, we'll take an extra 5 minutes we'll come back by 11:5 it's 10:49 on my clock it's 11:5 we can we can return from a tea break go quickly grab a cup of coffee and get back see you soon